Tonight on Hotel Hell, imagine if a teenage boy designed a hotel. It would look like a Ferrari. There's a lot of red. There'd be a chocolate pizza on the menu. It's like someone's wiped their ass with my dough. And there'd be hot waitresses with super short skirts. Well, this is the Keating Hotel. Looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. It might seem like a teenager's Shit. dream, but it's actually the twisted vision of a grown man. And for the staff who work here... I'm at the end of my room. I have my day's number in here. It's a living hell. Jesus Christ. Christ. Call 911. Urgently. San Diego, California, is one of the top five vacation destinations in the US and is home to the Keating Hotel, which lies in the heart of the city's buzzing gas lamp quarter. Want to say over desk? This is Christos. How may we have service? The hotel is the brainchild of local property developer Eddie Kane. Everything about the place is just the way he likes it. The Keating was my vision. I was at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars, and it kind of just hit me. Why not have the Ferrari of hotels? But this 35-room boutique hotel is far from living up to guest expectations. Oh, my gosh. Eddie pitches this as the Ferrari of hotels, but... It feels like a hospital, sterile almost. <laughs> this is all style and no substance. I feel like it's a jail. Like, I don't want to take my shoes off, ever. This is uh, not exactly luxury. Eddie hired a sports car design company and sank millions into the interior design, but he spent peanuts on things the hotel really needs. Let's not use this machine for the sheets because it has rust in the back. Making life a misery for his guests and his staff. I have zero resources. Pretty much everything there is to do here, I do it. How glamorous is this? It's a hell operations here, to be honest. Eddie's constantly adding ideas he's seen elsewhere, but that's hurting the hotel and the restaurant. I believe our menu is a fucking joke. It's like four pages long, which are all favorites of Eddie's, but we're not feeding a fucking million different Eddie's. We're feeding different people. At the end of the day, I am the owner, right? If there's something I want on the menu, Jeff's gonna do it. Yeah, I think I pissed them off. <laughs> Eddie will come in and say, I want a chicken parm slider on the menu. I had one in New York and I say yes. I have stopped being proud of my food. The hotel is millions of dollars in debt and struggling to fill the rooms. So I have my work cut out for me if I'm going to get this place back on track. We're losing a lot of money. It's a nightmare. But you should be able to handle that. Eddie knows he's losing money. I just don't think he knows how to fix it. I don't have any hope that things will get better. If anything works around here, it's because of pure dumb luck. There it is, the Keating. Wow, it looks nice on the outside. Beautiful. Jesus, is that a dog outside? Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Is that a model dog or is he real? No, she's real. That's What's her name? Smudge. Smudge. Right. My God, she's ugly. <laughs> looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. How are yeah, we? Uh, hello, how are you? Good to see you. There's a lot of red. Wow. I'm Christos. Christos, nice good to, to see you. And um, what do you do here? Lifestyle concierge down here at the front desk. You're going to be advising me for my life, or are you going to be. You need dinner reservations? So you organize everything? Anything you need. Oh. Now, somebody likes red. Is that smudge that likes red, or? No, it's both the designer and the owner. Wow. Wow, wow. Enjoy your stuff. Right, what floor are we on? We're on the second floor. Second floor, please. Perfect. Thank you. Right here, I like to always stop at the car. Each floor is a different model car. Thank Who's obsessed? Right. With the supercars, who is that? The owner. I agree. So right here, this is your room. Wow. Yes. It's so empty. More like a garage in the guest room. And how much is this a night? $759. $759? Wow. That's incredibly expensive. And what's that thing there? That is actually the jacuzzi tub. In the middle of the lounge? It is in the middle of the lounge. Wow. When they designed the rooms, they took away all the interior walls. But without sounding stupid. These are car designers. Correct, they and are car designers. Now they're putting jacuzzis in the middle of suites. Last time I checked, a living room was for sitting in, not taking a bath. <laughs> Jeez, 
How much do these things cost? The jacuzzi tub itself yeah. is about twenty thousand dollars. If you don't take baths in cars, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> this is crazy. But who wanted all these specially designed? That is the owner. Areas. That's Eddie. That's Eddie. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh shit. The sports car inspired furniture looks cheap and isn't even functional. It's different than anything else. Yeah. Um, different from a nice hotel room. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, who on earth would want to sit here and sort of watch the television? <laughs> and watch the television. <laughs> it works though. The sheets. How can they all so wrinkle when I haven't even slept in there? Why is that? We do them in house. When you say we, what do you mean? You don't do laundry. Lifestyle means everything. Your mouthwash. <laughs> It's like gas. Socket's all broken and smashed down there. Someone's left their dirty ones there. The plastic plants. That's outrageous, $800. Oh my gosh. Gordon doesn't like anything about the hotel. Damn it. Anything else? If I have any lifestyle needs, I'll call. Thank you. Of course. So far, I'm not impressed with the Keating's pretentious and uncomfortable design. But maybe it can redeem itself with the one thing every luxury hotel should have, impeccable room service. I'm starving. Come on, General the desk. This is Christos. How many of you? Hi, service? Christos. It's Gordon. What's a little bit bizarre for me is that I'm ordering room service at the front desk. Is it? There's no direct line down to the kitchen. There is no direct line down to the kitchen. The communication between departments isn't really there. So we um, take care of everything and make sure it, it happens. Listen, I'm starving. Um, I'll have a tomato soup, please. And then pizza, um, a barbecue chicken. I'm fascinated to see the chicken parmesan sliders. I'll have one of those. So I'll have that as soon as I can. Brilliant. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello, how are, how are you? you? Thank you. My pleasure. Wow. Well, is this how it's normally served? Yes. In a to-go box? Yes. You pay $800 a night to stay here, and you've got to eat your food out of boxes and plastic containers. Are we short of soup? Because it's not even half full. That's how they serve it. That's how they serve it? That, that much? Yes. It's wow. one cup. It's like a retirement home. Is that luxury, do you think? No, not at all. What would you rather do? Sip that out of a cup? Of course. Jeez, we, we, we barely got half a cup. Um, anyway, I'm going to dig in. If there's anything else I can do for you, just go ahead and let us okay. know, OK? Brilliant. Mm. Darling? I'm sorry. Mm. You can say that now. <laughs> it's finished. Thank you. My pleasure. A chicken parmesan slider. That's dreadful. Now I know why they got the boxes. It's a takeaway puke box. A pizza, unappetizing in a box, especially when you're spending $800 a night. This place is obsessed with design, but serves room service in plastic containers. No wonder they can't fill the rooms. That is not my idea of luxury, let me tell you. That's embarrassing. Wow. How can this place call itself a luxury hotel? I need to get some answers from Eddie, the Keating's owner and visionary. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good hey, to hey. see you. This place has been your baby in many ways, and uh, I'm dying to find out the vision, the insight, and to why. Give us a little tour. I bought the building back in 2000. It was around six million. Did you go to hotel school? No. Nope. You've never run a business before? Not a hotel business, no. Wow. Uh, so I was actually at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars and stuff, and it kind of hit me, why not the Ferrari of hotels? I'm more concerned what you were smoking at the time than what you were thinking. Why would you take one of the most high-spec cars anywhere in the world and turn it into a hotel? I don't know where he's coming from, but it does piss me off. I designed the Keating to be the perfect hotel for me, not for him. Where should I start? The floor. It's all scuffed and marked. When you have a resin floor, it needs to be updated. I mean, everything's just marked to hell. It feels cheap. Um, the sheets. You can't call yourself a luxury hotel if you don't have beautifully pressed sheets. OK. What's the idea behind sitting here? So when you have guests, you know, we can sit down and talk. And... No, but where's the sofa? Where's the table? Where's the fun? Do you know what hurt the most? I got soup served in a plastic bowl. But there's a chicken parmesan slider that tasted like it was cooked three days ago. Who in the fuck would put a chicken parmesan slider together? There's things that don't go in sliders, and chicken parm is one of them. That was my idea. But you're laughing as if it's funny, and you think because you own the place, you can put that in a roll and sell it. I don't know what he's talking about. This place is not bad. So I think Gordon's comments were complete bullshit. 
You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. I don't know what to say. When was the last time you stayed in the hotel? It's been a while. You cannot stand there and tell me that there's nothing wrong with this place when you don't even stay in it. You bought a building that was your dream, but it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I'm at the Keating Hotel in San Diego, and I've just met Eddie, the owner, who's completely oblivious to the fact that his supercar-inspired hotel is seriously underperforming. You're the owner, and you bought a building that was your dream, but it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I desperately want to help you. Only if you start identifying the problems. OK. Could you uh, send that young lady up to clear that dog shit out of there, please? Jesus. Trust me, Eddie is not used to honesty like that. Right now, he looks like a baby that's just had his lollipop stolen. How are you? Who is this guy? First thing he does, he lays right into me. The room service was terrible. Welcome to my world. He opened the bed up, and the sheets were all, like, wrinkled and... Most hotels have those giant ironing things that the sheets go through there. We don't have that. I tell Eddie the problems that we have. But it may be sometimes you tell people something and it goes one side to another. I was in shock. Maybe Gordon will get him to wake up. I don't even know what to say. That was very embarrassing. After my meeting with Eddie, I'm ready to see how this so-called luxury hotel runs on a normal night. Hi there, how are you guys? Are you a... Uh... Luxury lifestyle concierge. No, I am actually Sandra. I'm the GM of the hotel. And You're the general manager? Yes, oh, we haven't met. How long have you been here? I've been here for six years. Okay, wow. Well, so you're here from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I got a lot to tell you. You got a lot to tell me. <laughs> yeah. I bet she does. Because the Keating seems to have more complaints than guests. Our yeah. room is not very clean. There's mm -hmm. a hair in the sheets as well. We turned down our bed, mm -hmm. and there's what appears to be a bunch of sand. The sand? What do you think of the red? It's like a brothel. A bro oh. You've been in a brothel? I haven't. That's oh, right. what I've heard. OK. Well, I can confirm it is like a brothel. Is it? Cheese <laughs> <laughs> plate? Let me check on that right now. We've been waiting for 45 minutes. You know, if it's not up in 10 I'm minutes, just sure. cancel it, because we'll go to dinner, OK? OK. How can they make a guest wait so long for something that's not even cooked? The system for room service here is clearly not working. Taking the orders at the front desk, then pass them to the kitchen is madness. I've never seen anything like this before. Let's go through the kitchen together. OK. Weirdly, the hotel's restaurant, the Merc, is in a separate building around the corner. Can you believe that we're waiting 45 minutes for a cheese board? I can't believe it, Seriously? but I'm not surprised. She looked pretty pissed, huh? She did look pretty pissed. They sounded pissed the three times they called as well. Wow. What is it? Is it cheese board? Yes. Uh, where's the fucking cheese? Is that it? That is it. How much is that? $16.99, I believe. You're kidding me. I can guarantee someone's going to complain about that. Yeah. Hello. How are you, Gordon? Yeah, well, how are you? My name is Aaron, Aaron. the manager. You're the manager. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Gordon. Um, you're the manager of the restaurant? Yes, yeah, sir. That cheese portion there, barely two little slithers of cheese. They waited 45 minutes for it. And it's like no one gives a shit. Oh, I definitely do now that you've told me this is the first time that I've heard of it. Why would they wait 45 minutes for something that's already... Uh, I, I think the process, unfortunately, is a little bit slow here. I think getting up the stairs uh, is a little bit of a challenge. Why don't you take the call in the kitchen? Oh, in the kitchen itself, we can take that call. It's definitely an option, but we've always... Discussed... Would you think that's faster? I think as the hotel takes it, it's just as fast as... So even though the customers are unhappy with the wait that they've had to endure, you don't want to do anything for them? I didn't know how long the customer was waiting until just now. Wow. OK. Manager. Fuck me. Aaron, the restaurant manager, isn't taking any responsibility. If he worked for me, he'd be long gone. How fucking weird. I mean, How'd you rate him out of 10? Can we go into negatives? Aaron is the king of excuses as far as being able to kind of weasel his way out of things, but I'm not in charge of firing him. How are we doing over here, guys? No wonder the hotel is half empty. They can't even get the basics like room service and laundry right. Maybe Sandra, the GM, can tell me what the hell is going on Sandra. here. Right, we're having a chance yes, to uh, catch up. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you. So, all these issues with the laundry, where's the laundry done? Let me show you. Please. Oh, here we are. So this is the laundry room. Wow. Bloody hell, you have got your work cut out. These are domestic. I know. These washing machines are designed for small families, not a 35-bedroom hotel. Wow. No wonder they struggle. 
your lifestyle concierge come in here throughout their day to do laundry and attend the front desk and take room service we, orders. We are the... I mean, this is crazy. It is insane. Absolutely it is, it crazy. is insane. I don't know how we do it sometimes. Who presses the sheets? We don't. We don't have equipment. So you don't press them? Yes. Can I show you where we are in the pillowcases? Yeah, so, Absolutely. Oh God, there's somewhere else. You seem to know all these problems and you're the general manager, but if there's one person who could stop this, it's you. If the owner... Well, yes, I can quit. I can leave to another hotel and go where everything is much better. It is hell to run this place. You're a general manager. Mm -hmm. Yet you're managing nothing. I spoke to the owner. I said, this has to change. What's going on? Gordon is totally right with what he's saying, but is Eddie being so involved in everything? That's the problem. I have conversations with the owner about what works and what doesn't work in the restaurant. No matter how many times I say, you know what, we should not have a book as a menu. Eddie comes up with whatever he wants. But no one's taking responsibility. I pulled back my duvet and the sheets were shocking. $800 a night to stay in something pretty mediocre. You should be ashamed. I am ashamed. I am ashamed. I've got to get out of here. Let me get down to the restaurant. Jesus. Coming up, I've never seen anything so fucking unappetizing. Things at the Keating go from bad to worse. I wouldn't serve any of our dishes to my dog. You OK? And one of the staff reaches his breaking point. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Urgently. For a so called luxury hotel, the Keating has been a major disappointment. <clears throat> it's like gas. The owner's misguided vision. You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. It's taken its toll on the staff. It is hell to run this place. Hopefully, the food in the hotel's restaurant is better than it was in my room. How are you doing? Table of one, please. All right. Ooh. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. And yourself? Very well, thank you. And oh, sorry, cool. first name is? To the Merc. My name is David. David. So what do you do? I am actually the restaurant manager here. I thought I just met the restaurant manager, the little man. I'm the other restaurant manager. And the food, how would you rate the food out of 10? Six. Six. I wouldn't serve any of our dishes to my dog. Chef Brian's kind of given up. So much has been taken out of Brian's hands by Eddie that I don't think that he has the passion and the drive to be that great anymore. Starting off with chicken under a brick, what does that actually mean? It means it's drier than a bone. Amazing. Even the manager thinks the food's terrible here, and he's not embarrassed to tell me. And then the capitato. Capitapi? Yeah, here we go. With chicken, uh, sun dried tomatoes, mushrooms. Oh. You like that one? No. Oh, shit, really? Uh, I'm still going to try yeah. it. So for dessert, I'll go for the chocolate pig. Um, it's a 10-inch uh, dessert pizza. Chocolate, strawberries, bacon. How can I resist that? Thank you, Ernst, indeed. Thank you. The table I'm ringing right now, just bring it as it comes, OK? Everything's under fire. We're at Gordon, sir. Uh, right, what do we have here? This is the brick chicken. $21. $21. Brick chicken. Yeah, it looks like someone's just shat a brick. Yeah. I mean, really dry. That's actually better than usual. Really? Yeah. Chicken under a brick is where it should have stayed, because it should have never come out of the kitchen. Wow. Pardon my reaching. OK. This is the cavatappi and chicken. OK. Bland, chicken's dry, way too much rosemary, and just, it's Whoa. shit. At least I've saved room for dessert. What you have here is the chocolate pig. It's white and dark chocolate, strawberries, bacon. It's like we've had a crisis with the toilet paper department. Someone's wiped their ass with my dough. I mean, it's just... I've never seen anything so fucking unappetizing as a dessert in all my life. Absolutely. <laughs> bacon and chocolate pizza, O-M-F-G. Yeah, he didn't like any of it. Not one thing. Fuck me. <laughs> Is the chef uh, off tonight? No, he's in the back. He's in the back. Is he yes. cooking or? No. So he's here, but he's not cooking. Hmm. I would uh, really like to meet the uh, executive chef. 
chef. Brian Rutherford, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon. How are you? Uh, let's go somewhere out the uh, line, shall we? Yeah. I'm lost for words. I just, you know, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. I, I'm... Why wouldn't you cook for me? Why wouldn't you do that? It's not a question of me not cooking for you. It's do you want to see what we're doing here and improve? Because I want this to improve. You've been here for how long? Five years. Five years. But you've been cooking for 30, 30 years? 33 years. 33 years. I didn't see you on the line. I didn't see you taste anything. I didn't even see you inspire anybody. This position is killing me in my soul. I've just been doing everything that Eddie wanted. We have too large a menu for the amount of business we do. So if I have 120 items on the menu and we do 50 people a night, how much of this am I able to prep on a regular basis to have quality? But you're the executive chef on the menu. Yes, I am. How can you let that food go out with your name above it? Um, you can't just give up and almost, you know, abandon ship before it's sunk. I'm at the end of my rope. You're toast. I'm tired. But you're, you're, you're an experienced guy. Are you OK? Look at me, look at me. It's Are you OK? Are you on medication? No. Excuse me, can you get me some uh, water, please? Quickly. Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus, no. come here. Jesus Christ. Urgently. What happened? The chef's on the floor. Oh, shit. Are you okay? Call 911. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Chef just fell, collapsed. Can I have some water, please? Yes. And a cold cloth. Absolutely. Urgently. Let's try and stay alert. Look at me, look at me. Brian! Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Jesus Christ. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus. No. Come here. Jesus Christ. Call 911. Chef's on the floor. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Chef just fell, collapsed. Let's try and stay alert and drink some water. No job is worth this, let me tell you. I was with the gentleman we were just standing talking, and unfortunately, he just collapsed and banged his head on the back here. I am really pissed off at Gordon. He's stressing everybody out. Everyone seems to be at their boiling point. Has he been stressed out for long? I mean, this has put a lot of stress on all of us. Yeah. What, me being here? Yeah. But do not dare fucking go anywhere near that I put him in that ambulance. Got it. Let me tell you something. 150 items on a fucking menu the size of a fucking shoebox can send that man to an early grave, let me tell you. It's like he's a dead man walking. Yeah. And what he tried to tell me in a five-minute conversation is that you've overburdened him because he does whatever you want. You pay his salary, but you're not behind that line. You have no catering experience. You haven't spent a day in a kitchen. I've never seen anything so fragmented. Okay. It's like you're a little magpie, a little spoiled fucking magpie that's going around picking up little bits of glitter and running back and getting your army to expedite it for you. All that matters right now is that that guy wakes up tomorrow feeling better. Enough. Is enough for one day. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Good night. Thanks. For me, the most important thing is that he's okay. But that guy has the world on his shoulders, and tonight proved that. What a day yesterday. The good news is that Brian's out of hospital. And they said it was dehydration and anxiety. So I'm going to shoot over to his house, keep the cameras outside, and hopefully have a chat with him. How are you, sir? Come on in. I'm so glad to see you. You know that. Hi. I'm telling you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling well. <laughs> We've got immense troubles at the hotel. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue driving yourself into the ground like that. Eddie he takes advantage of my good nature. Do you feel well enough to come back to the restaurant today? Yeah. Good. Let's get you back in there. And trust me, this time, it's on your terms, not Eddie's. Definitely. Good to see you. The restaurant is the beating heart of any good hotel. 
so the Keating has no chance without Chef Brian. Thankfully, just a couple of hours after I saw him, Brian is back at the hotel. After going to the hospital, I believe that Gordon is totally in my corner, saying, get back in there, get it, you, you got this guy. Now it's time to get the whole staff together to figure out how to get this hotel back on track. Thank you all for uh, meeting me. Am I happy to see you or what? How are you feeling, more importantly? I am feeling very good. Brilliant, welcome back. Thank you very yeah. much. Let's get everything out on the table, because life's too short to fester. I'm here to help. And I just want to hear it from you guys. What's wrong with the Keating? The resources. It's the resources. I tell Eddie all the time, Eddie, I can't do my job. Your front reception desk should not be doing laundry, let me tell you that. The big concern I have is the room service. How on earth do we get ourselves in that mess? As a food and beverage manager, yeah, tell me why it's going via the reception. It's determined by, you know, Eddie. Oh my God, don't give me that. You're not the owner of the place. I tell you what I want and you guys need to implement it. Why is the menu so big? Because Eddie comes up with ideas. I, Eddie sees things. Eddie has a lot of friends that come in that would like to see more items on the menu. Yeah. If I go see something I like from somewhere else, I tell you guys to implement it. But you're not a chef, he is. And he needs his identity, and he needs his voice. I do know Brian doesn't like to say no to me. You have a general manager, you have a head chef, executive chef, you have a front desk manager, you shouldn't get involved. And I give them ideas, you know? Because I have a vision here and I give them the ideas. No. No. I cannot work with you if you're like this. We have the key players. There's one little problem we have. And unfortunately, it's you at this point. After last night's dramatic turn of events, Look at me. Jesus the staff of the have finally found the courage to confront Eddie, the owner. Now, there's one question I have to ask. Tell me. Who's the most important person at the Keating? Who is it? Eddie Brian, yeah? The most important person at the Keating. Sandra, who is it? I, I gotta say, it's Eddie. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I believe it would be Eddie. Eddie. Sandra. No, no. The most important person at the Keating is the guest. And I think it's all been forgotten about. And it's more about keeping you, Eddie, happy. We have to focus on the guest. I'm here to put this place right. Understand that. Eddie and Sandra, uh, just come with me. If Eddie won't listen to me, and he won't listen to his staff, maybe he'll listen to the people who could pay the bills around here. Eddie, up until now, this hotel has always been about you, your dream, your vision. Now, it's about the guest. I want you to meet some very important people. I'm just really worried right now. I have no idea what Gordon has in the room. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. I see you. Uh, guests that have been staying at the Keating over the last 24 to 48 hours. Oh, no. When I see all those guests there, I want to run away right now. I wanted to give you a unique opportunity to hear some very, and I mean very, valuable feedback. I've also stayed here. Um, and I am frustrated, but I'm here to get this place back on the map. Give me a little insight, please. What do you think of this luxury hotel? Madam, what would you? I walked into the room and it smelled horrible. There was the rest in the jacuzzi, no water. Some of the features in the room were just lower quality, like the plastic looked a little mm -hmm. bit cheap and old, <laughs> so it doesn't feel comfortable. Madam, okay. please. I just feel like this place was designed kind of form over function. It was just kind of weird. Where is one supposed to sit and eat breakfast in their room? My husband had to stand up this morning to have his breakfast while I took the only chair and sat at the desk. I'm sorry. Our, our room service was, um, we ordered a couple of the small pizzas, and they essentially looked like microwave pizzas. And then the order was wrong, so we called the correct. They eventually you know, brought up what we actually ordered. And then in the morning, they charged us for both. Wow, I'm sorry. Anybody else? There was some really high-end stuff. And then at the same time, there was just simple amenities that were skipped. Well, are you saying there's better at the same price out there? Yes, sure. Yeah. Eddie, your baby, your vision. Um, on the back of that feedback? No, I appreciate the feedback. I have one question for you all. Who would return here? Let's do a show of hands. Who would come back? 
to the Keating. Wow. Not one person. Gordon's comment about, it's not what I want, it's what the guests want. Wow. I'm starting to realize that some of the things he's saying actually are true. I really apologize, and I am looking forward to having you guys in the future. I can tell you will have a different experience. Eddie and Sandra, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but this is, for me, critical feedback, and it's only going to get better. The feedback from the customers was good. I'm realizing there's more issues than I thought we had, and just being here over the past couple days, I'm seeing what they are. I think we can definitely fix them and streamline them so the place works a lot more efficiently and all the guests are happy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Eddie is starting to see how much things have to change for this place to succeed. But for the hotel to have a fighting chance of turning a profit, I've got to find a way to reignite Chef Brian's love of cooking. Let's show the gang what we can do. Yeah. I don't have much passion here anymore. I'm hoping that, that, that Gordon being here will nurse it back. Um, right, first was the uh, roasted beet and burrata salad. They've just been seasoned with a little touch of salt, pepper, and then finished in a little hazelnut vinaigrette. Scallops. I like serving scallops with a nice sear. So, a touch of salt, pepper, a little bit of vinaigrette. I've just made it sort of citrusy. Good. Sorry. Good. I love it when you get excited like that. It's you know, energy coming back. I absolutely love it. I'll just have a little taste. <laughs> Are you okay, Brian? You, you're killing me. <laughs> there's, there's two things on the plate. Ah, oh, the, the, the okay. scallops and the onion purees. When I'm on the line with Gordon, the energy level just pops up, and now I'm, you know, I'm standing a little taller, and it's exciting. Nice, happy. Yeah, good. So nice to see you smiling, you know that. Gordon kind of unlocked the chains that I had allowed to be put on. I'm with you every step of the way, but you need a voice in here, and your voice is on that plate. Let it scream. I love Eddie, but I have to be able to just say, this is not going to work. This is not to the benefit of the hotel, the guests, the restaurant, or anything. Really you can do it, and I know you can do it. I needed this to remember what I used to do and that, that there's no limit to what I can do in the future. Brian and Eddie are both making great strides. And tonight, my design team will move in and try to get this hotel out of the pits. But first, there's something I've just got to try. I've got a 25 grand bath, so I might as well use it. Sound like a 25 grand bar, let me tell you. Someone's been ripped off. Right, towel, please. It's been a challenging week at the Keating Hotel, a place that was all style and no substance. But its owner, Eddie, has finally turned a corner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good. Very good. Excellent. It's time to show him and his staff how my design team have transformed the Keating into a place people will actually want to stay. OK, good. Let's be honest, the Keating is a hotel with huge potential, right? Yes. yes. But you need to focus your attention and energy to the guests that are staying here. Yeah? Yes. Come with me. Let me show you the Keating. Let's go. Come in. Welcome. Wow. Come in. Wow. That is great. Oh, my god. It's all opened up. Wow. There's no more dominant red. Read carefully all those wonderful configurations of your hands. Welcome to the Keating. It's just so beautiful. Isn't it? It's just such an emotional experience. You all have a hand in helping the guests feel welcome. It's amazing. You disappointed the red is gone? No. No? No. It's a brand new, warm, inviting entrance to a hotel. Awesome. Ready to see more? Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Come into my suite. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So much nice. Oh, oh wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I am definitely oh blown <laughs> away. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. Welcome to what I think is a sophisticated, comfortable, modern suite. Yeah? Let's start off with that jacuzzi. If guests 
would like to take a bath. Pull the curtains, they have a choice. That's how you embody luxury. The sofas, you can sit down, you can watch TV three meters away from the screen. <laughs> Brian, you're going quiet on me again, jeez. We thought we were sleek and cool. Mm. And now it's beautiful, it feels welcoming. Come through to the bedroom, please. I really like the concept of the made over suite. Now it screams the guests. You get stuck in a perspective sometimes, and you need to take a step back and have someone you know, come in and show you, and I think that's what Gordon has done. It's amazing. Now, something really important. I've organized a free trial period from a local linen company. Use it to your advantage. That means the front desk team doesn't need to waste time doing laundry. You've got more time to focus on the guests. <laughs> and Sandra, you are a GM. You're not a laundry assistant. The lifestyle concierge. We don't have to worry about laundry. So I am happy. There's more. Let's go. Right, excited? Yes. Come through. We have refreshed the menu, OK? <laughs> oh, my God! Wow. <gasps> Breakfast pizza. I've worked with Chef Brian to devise a short new menu that will play to his strengths. First impressions visually. It's very vibrant. The presentation's amazing. And the good news is, two-thirds of the menu's gone. Chef, what do you think? I think that this allows me to speak to the guest. And Aaron, I want you, as the food and beverage manager, to take responsibility of room service. Own it. And no plastic containers. I, I think now we have the proper execution, the proper understanding of the menu with limited yeah. small items. We definitely can execute it a lot quicker, and now I feel a lot more comfortable. And that, for me, is great news, because it means the front desk is no longer looking after room service or do laundry. They can Thank concentrate you. on looking after the guests. Yes. There's one more change we need to do. You've been wearing a red chef jacket for far too long. You deserve a white one, let me tell you. Put that on. Thank you. Enjoy it. I certainly and... will. I'm feeling great. I'm no longer Eddie's chef in the red jacket. I'm the chef of the Merc Bistro in white. It's not Eddie's favorite color, but it is a proper chef's jacket. You perform like one. You deserve it. Make it yours. Thank you, Gordon. Well done. This is the kind of energy you want to see every day. So you know what? As long as they're doing their jobs, I have no problem with them saying no to me anymore. Big night tonight. And it's going to be a packed restaurant. You've got to remember you are all Team Keating. I know you can do it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Guests are arriving for the relaunch of the Keating Hotel. And the first impressions are very positive. This is really nice. You like it? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Whoa. At long last, the front desk can focus on welcoming guests. How are you? Welcome. I'm Cindy. Pleasure to meet you. And the hotel's new white lobby is a great improvement. Wasn't this all red? And before it looked like a bus station, now it looks like a hotel. It looks mm -hmm. much more inviting. At the restaurant, Aaron is finally here. stepping up her, right? and taking a new hands-on approach to room service. Go on, go on, come on, quick. And not a plastic container in sight. Mr. Hanks, right? Yeah. Excellent, I... we got room service right, over here yes. for you. The simplified menu has brought Brian back to life. I want the most gorgeous plates in the world coming up in this window. That's good news for the diners. So beautiful. It's very tender. It's like, I don't even need this knife. This is a joint where you don't need ketchup. So it's perfectly seasoned. And for the future of Eddie and the Keating Hotel. Keep it going. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, look how tender It's perfect. If I had one thing to say to Gordon right now, it's just, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's our last ticket out. I've been really lost here, and you've woken me up. Yes. Great job. New day, new day. And reminded me of who I am. <sighs> this place was all about Eddie's dream of what a hotel should be like. But he forgot the most important person, the guest. I'm just hoping that Eddie can trust his staff and let them work as a team, because this is a place I'd love to come back to. OK. Right, Sandra, you are a great general manager. Don't stop being one, OK? Gordon, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm to proud you. to be the general manager of the Keaton Hotel. Give me a hug. <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> right, well done. Seriously, you can do the food and beverage. You can handle the room service easily. And my God, I mean, you bounce back from the dead. Let me tell you. Literally. Literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Make it yours. Oh, it okay. Is mine. Well done. And do not change that jacket. Okay. White suits you. You know that. <laughs> and let your team run your business. Okay. I think this experience with Gordon was life changing for everyone here. What you did to get the team back together, I mean, I'm telling you, no one could have done. But this place is on the road, and good luck. I can't wait to come back. It's one of those experiences you'll never forget. Good job, guys. Sometimes no. you have to trust. No. 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 Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm trying to breathe life back into a historic country inn. Yeah, that smells. Shit. The hotel's arrogant owner, Robert Dean II. I've always thought you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treats the inn like his personal castle and treats his loyal staff with disdain. Go on, then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? Is this hotel beyond my help? I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I mean, I'm going to lose everything. The historic Juniper Hill Inn sits on a hilltop above the quaint village of Windsor, Vermont. Built in 1902, the country mansion boasts 28 luxurious bedrooms and two grand dining rooms. It is filled with original works of art and antiques, all museum quality. Antiques dealer Robert Dean II and his boyfriend Ari Nicky bought the business six years ago. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. I thought these looks good there, Robert. I thought you'd like it. The guests that we don't want here are people who don't have a lot of money. The inn may look the part, but despite Robert's dreams of an elite country estate, the hotel is barely functioning. Robert Dean has no hotel or no restaurant experience. The prices may be a little bit high for locals. $350. Two night minimum, so that's $700. $700? The lack of communication is very frustrating. Where are you? And I know the customers see that every day. I need my key, too, because at this point, I can't even get in my room. Okay. With bookings at an all-time low, the hotel is in serious financial trouble. But that doesn't stop Robert from living a millionaire's dream. Robert believes this place is his playground. Yeah. Playground for his friends. He's got to have a lot of clothes made by you. <laughs> <laughs> he comps all their meals and rooms, but we never get tips. They're having a hard time paying me because they give away all of their money and food to their friends, showing off, using this as their private castle. With hardly any paying guests, it's no wonder that this inn is in the red. Yes, we are losing money. More or less like $200,000 a year. I think that the place is going to be closed, and it's, that's very sad. Gordon is going to come into this place and say this place is fucked. If I don't stop this business from bleeding money, it's doomed. I'd love to own an inn in a setting like this. If you get it right, you'd make an absolute fortune. Before I get to Juniper Hill, I want to find out what the townsfolk think of the local inn. Hello. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, rather. I've been driving all morning. Um, how's Juniper? Hell in. You're gonna love it. It's beautiful. And um, reputation? It tends to be a little on the high end for our area. Okay. But I would love to have a place to go to locally. Do they not invite locals up there? I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. Thank you so much. Have a great Best day and, and welcome you. to Windsor. Thank you very much indeed. Take Enjoy care. Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Here we are. Juniper Hill Inn. Now, who in the hell would bring an RV all the way up here and not stay in that stunning hotel? Look at it. My god, that's beautiful. Wow, OK. Around to the front door. Can't believe they haven't cleared the snow for a guest to come in. Wow. Oh. You're kidding me. It's locked. That's not very welcoming. Why would you have a big mansion that 
Guests can't arrive through the front fucking door. Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. Well, at least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Black Gordon, please. Oh, oh Bloody Gordon. Hell, what a nightmare. I'm Robert what? Dean. Robert Dean. We, uh, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. Okay, this is actually our entrance, and in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked, because otherwise the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um... An aftermath of an antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room. But you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk? No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar? Yes. With what, that? Martinis. Martinis. Yeah. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A giant. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques. But as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one. Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, just out of interest, how Well, do... we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have like a cozy banquette. Oh, well. Three US presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here. Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of sense of the history, but Juniper Hill. Wow. OK, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God. You must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is turning how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room if you would not okay. mind, please. All right. Wow, uh, this place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Evart Suite, which is the original. Um, OK. Wow, beautiful room. And, uh... uh I mean, this is, uh, this is a beautiful room, but what is that smell? Seriously. It, it does smell. Yeah, that smells like shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my God. It smells like sewage. Coming up, Robert's staff turn on him. I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how the people that I work with feel. The entire staff is ready to walk out. You can talk to him. He's your fucking chef. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. And I have to step in. How dare you? You still haven't got it. Get your head out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. Excuse me. Go on then, you pompous fuck. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just met its owner, Robert Dean II, who's filled his hotel with expensive art and antiques. Were you born with this in your mouth? But he can't fill his rooms, and his business is struggling. You're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. And no wonder. Because although the room he's put me in looks nice... Beautiful room. ...it has one major drawback. What is that smell? It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue and... It's like someone's it's... shot under the bed and... Um, 
How much? This room goes for $350 a night. $350 a night for a room that smells of shit? Well... You're kidding me. We haven't rented it, though. Bloody hell. It's been out of use for, um, four months. Four months? Yeah. Oh, come on. It has been. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. It stinks of shit. Is there another room? Yes, please? I have room too. Bloody yeah. hell. I didn't realize. $350 to be caked in shit. Wow. It's gorgeous. And this one doesn't smell like crap. I'm going to quickly um, unpack and then I would um, I would like to have a um, a quick bite of lunch. OK. I'll, yeah? tell, I'll notify the chef. What time does the restaurant close for lunch? I know well, it's we actually don't serve lunch normally, but we're happy to prepare you something. <laughs> is that a joke? We, we serve breakfast no, no, and dinner. Stop, 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 stop. You don't actually serve lunch. No. The restaurant's closed for lunch. Yes. If someone requests lunch, we'll make lunch for them, but... Could you uh, prepare lunch for me? Uh, yes, I can. I'll tell the chef. Please. OK. Uh, thank you. Yes. Not open for lunch. Gordon is going to want lunch. Huh? Gordon wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? Hmm. That was a welcome breath of fresh air on the back of that disgusting smell of crap in that room. I can't believe it. And the rooms are gorgeous, and yet how could you have a room that has been smelling for months that bad, and then he sticks me in it? What a muppet. Despite the hideous smell in that first guest room, I've still worked up quite an appetite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Barbara. Barbara, how glamorous are you? How nice to see you. Likewise. I have a mad crush on Gordon. As he knows, I'm a cougar. <laughs> how old are you now? I'm old. Don't You're say. not old. Last week, I turned 70. You're kidding me. You look you a million dollars. You have made my year. 70. <laughs> Watch out, Joan Collins, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Barbara, what's wrong with this place? Well. In a nutshell. Don't get any people. Mm -hmm. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. But hold on a minute. You you don't get paid, and when you do... Not, at, not on time. We're supposed to get paid every two weeks. So what do you earn a fortnight? I made 6000 this year. $6,000 a year? That's ridiculous. You know, you got to have the money flowing, and it's almost come to a standstill at this point. My last paycheck was... $48. Unbelievable. Robert's obviously got enough money to fill the guest rooms with fine art and antique furniture. But he doesn't pay his staff. Um, I'm starving. What would you recommend? The crab cakes with a little salad. So this is the dinner menu. OK, because we're not open for lunch. Right. And the lamb sounds great as well. You want the lamb? Yeah. All right. Darling, is this a uh, prefix menu? Or... Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's no prices on here. What sort of restaurant doesn't have prices on the menu? It's like a club for millionaires where, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I've got a supplement of $15 from the lamb. It's How enough, much is... Enough charge for the lamb. Is Robert nearby? How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb... It would be... 74 People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why... A lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. When we typically take a reservation, we will tell people it's a three-course meal. But that's for the residents. I'm talking about a local coming in here. We're reservation only, though, so nobody walks in. We don't what? have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? Um, we haven't identified the appropriate people to come here, or... Hold on a minute. What do you mean, appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? The Ritz? And where's your table? Which one's your table? Uh, well, most of the time I eat in our RV, our motor coach. Say that again? Oh, we have a motor coach to the side. Price, and where'd it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Uh, yeah, it's ours. It, we, I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it. and We bought, bought it. it? Yeah. How much was that? Over $100,000. $100,000? You're three years away from 50. You should not be living in an RV. We don't live in uh, an RV. Um, it is a motor coach, which is the higher-end version of an RV. It is that psychological break for us, and it gives me a place to relax and kind of unwind. I actually love it. I could live there the rest of my life, to be honest with you. It's quiet, it's clean. I suppose if this place doesn't get fixed, then you might be in there full-time, yeah. I've just sat down for lunch at the Juniper Hill Inn. Hello. And already I've found out the staff aren't paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my page. And the owners live in a camper outside. How much was that? Uh, over $100,000. This place is baffling. 
I hope the food makes more sense. Excellent. <laughs> wow. Where are the crab cakes? Oh, that's them there, underneath there. Are they mini crab cakes? Are we, uh... The chef has decided that those are the size that he needs to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, that tastes dreadful. That thing tastes sort of washy and soapy. And twenty dollars for that. He's as cheap with his crab cakes as he is with his staff. Wow. Now for the lamb with Robert's ridiculous fifteen dollar extra charge. It's um, a rack of lamb mackerel. encrusted in macadamia nuts, uh, fresh herbs, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's served with a honey vinegar reduction. It's not even cooked properly. I'll rest it and I'll take that off. I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. Is it to your liking? I mean, it's pretty raw in the center. You like the flavor of it, though, the honey curry? No, way too no. sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not satisfied with uh, the quality of the food that's coming out of the kitchen. I believe our chef has a learning curve to be well, where he needs to be. Thank you. <laughs> we just lost our other chef. Right. Why did the chef leave? I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. Why did the chef leave? Well, her paycheck. She put all her, everything on her uh, charge cards, and, and she just figured she wasn't paid back for what she... The chef bought produce on her she credit did, card? She did everything. She was the best chef ever. Barbara, that's dreadful. I'm starving. Um, the peanut butter chocolate decadence, uh, I could do with some of that. Pick me up, please. Thank you. God. A chef that left because she had to buy produce on her own credit card. I mean, this guy's priorities are upside down. A bit like this inn. Okay, are you ready? This, he said, he doesn't care for the sweetness, there's fat around it. He didn't care for the flavor of the honey gar. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, did you cut it in half? Because it looks like someone's taken it. And where's the other half gone? Uh, it goes to the another person who orders. Oh, no, I want my other half. $74. This place is insane. Listen, half my dessert's missing. If you think I'm spending $74 for a dessert that is half cocked. Mm. It's actually quite nice. There is hope. I'm sorry. You like I'm, I'm going to say that that is not a dessert that he made. Barbara made it. No. Nope. Somebody else makes desserts. It's ordered. Like store bought? Like through one of our purveyors. What? Where's the chef? He's in the kitchen. Can you get him out, please? Yes. What? How you doing, chef? Julian, in my opinion, is not living up to his potential as a chef. He will try to cut corners, and I think Gordon needs to know these things. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. Crab cakes? Yes, sir. You can't put two little half testicle-sized fucking crab cakes that came from a can there's bigger fucking cakes, chef, at a fucking canopy party. My lamb was cold in the middle, the fat was white. It was almost like a mouthful of sugar. The best tasting dish for me was the fucking chocolate peanut thing that I got served half a portion that's not even made fucking in-house. What is this? There's no synergy here. There is honestly a lack of communication often. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing breakfast service for the 10 people that we randomly get, I get five texts from him asking me a question. So why are you texting him? If you have a question, I'd you like should you maybe leave the RV and come out show, and talk to show us. Show me those texts. Are you nitpicking? Are you trying to control him? Are you... No, I'm trying to make sure I, I'm, I haven't been sleeping very well, to be honest with you, and uh, I've, had, I've been beaten down. I'll take responsibility for everything that happens in the kitchen. You don't own the place. You own it, yet he's acting more responsible. What do you earn a week, if you don't mind me asking? A thousand dollars? Before taxes, four hundred. Jesus Christ almighty. Four hundred dollars a week to be the head chef in a luxury hotel? That's insane. I mean, you're barely surviving. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. Are you taking the piss, or is this just an abuse for you? What are you doing to these people? This is their livelihoods. This is your responsibility. Rob's world, and you're in an RV, a hundred grand. 
Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are because it costs so much money and they can't get their paycheck on time. Well, that is not the that is that not is the case. That is part of the issue. But we are was... surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how me, the people that I work I with feel. feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And if I'm on the computer, usually as I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We, we do things. Oh, please. It's my first day at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and the battle between the chef and the owner I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. Has turned what should be a charming country inn into a war zone. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We're tired, and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that uh, I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills and all of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time. And they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. And he said that everything is all about me. I can't believe what a mess this place is. I've got to get off this hill for a bit. There's someone I need to see. Hello, is that Lida? It's Gordon Ramsay. I've got some questions about Robert and Juniper Hill. Would you mind if I pop over for five minutes, please? Great. I'll see you then. Thanks, Lida. I think the old chef that quit will be able to give me some insight into what's wrong with Juniper Hill. Hello, Lida, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stopped answering the phone. Hmm. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in way that... very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. I was getting cut out of a living when they did all this stuff. I used to earn forty, fifty thousand dollars in one restaurant and now I'm down to earning uh, 15. Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Wow. Um, did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back or we weren't gonna open for dinner. It's insane. Barbara's been shorted checks a lot. She's barely earning $100 a week. Can yeah, you? and he won't pair. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. That's just disgusting. I mean, I, that's where I, I draw that. You can't do that. No. You just can't treat people like that. Now, no. he's a confirmed snob and he thinks he's above yeah. the town. He thinks he's untouchable. I'm here to make this place work. Um, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is burst his bubble. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... <laughs> would, would, would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just come back for dinner? No. No, just one go or...? No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. And, what a shame, um, after five years. Yeah. Do you think I've got a chance of saving it? The problem he has now is nobody will work there. You know, I'm there to get this place turned around. Uh -huh. um, those staff deserve a better future. They do. You know, I, I feel terrible for them. Um, listen, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Lida. Likewise. Nice to meet you. Good to see you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. How sad is that? After five years of her life dedicated to the Juniper Hill, you know, she won't even step foot in the door. She doesn't want to even see them. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it, and the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. 
I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what you, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with the place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either. No. We're missing basic supplies too. Basic supplies. We don't even have. I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today, so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. So what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. That's nearly a month. And you pay the employees before paying your bills when they've done the work. That's their livelihood. I'm amazed you're still here, working as hard as you are. Because staff never need to be treated like this, let me tell you. It's always as if what you're saying to him doesn't get through because he sees you as not an equal. He treats me like that, and that really bothers me because I feel like I've contributed a lot. It's actually pretty degrading. This is insane. Coming up. Oh, my God. I uncover the shocking extent of Robert's reckless spending. Thousands of dollars worth. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Robert's dreadful communication skills cause a meltdown. I said, where does this chicken go? Ask him again. Tempest flare. Excuse me. One. I am the boss and Robert reveals his true colours. How dare you! I'm shocked with what I'm finding at the Juniper Hill Inn. Owner Robert wants to kill his chef. How long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And the rest of the staff want to kill Robert. How's morale? Not good. Estate manager Ryan has told me about some of the problems, but I now he wants to show me. If you want to see the root of the problem, let's go to the basement. <laughs> to the basement? Yes, please. Jesus, what's in there? Everything. Oh, really? It's the majority of it is personal items. Not even the shelves are all lined. Bloody hell. Look at this place. Oh, my God! Look at this stuff. Stereos, wine racks, quilts, chairs, tables, copper pans, more chairs over there. Look at these. Robert prides himself in having to have the very best of everything. Christ, there's enough in here to open three restaurants. Is all this stuff still brand new? Most of it is brand new. Littered with thousands of dollars. Robert's got so much stuff, he could furnish a dozen houses. But he doesn't pay his staff. It's crazy. Where are we going? Brace yourself. We're going up to the office. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Please come, come on. In. This is the office. This is the office. You are kidding me. Not at all. I wanted you to. Jesus Christ. It scares me half to death. Oh my gosh. This is insane. It would only take a day or two to sort out this hoarder's heaven, but Robert's left it in chaos. No wonder he spends all day hiding in his RV. This guy has lost the plot. This is disturbing. Please tell me there's no more. Yes, there's more. This is where the pigs are kept. <laughs> at least they look happy. Hey. Pigs who live a life of luxury while everyone around them suffers. Sounds strangely familiar. Bloody hell. So the owners live out, the pigs live in. There's more. So check out the storage units. Storage units? You are kidding me. No. Oh, my god. This one's all personal items. Look at oh, this. Jesus. I mean, I swear to god, it's like a special edition of Hoarders. I mean, honestly. Wow. I'm in shock, you know that. And this one? All of this entire storage unit is full of chairs. Oh my God. Look at this stuff, honestly. I mean, they must be packed with thousands of dollars worth of... Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much stuff does one need? Bloody hell. I can't believe how much stuff Robert has bought. He must have spent a fortune. I've got to meet Robert's partner, Ari, and find out why he's financing all this. Welcome, welcome. My name's Ari. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Please. Um, my God. So, how much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. It was all my, my uh, severance packages, my income that I when I was working, and then my retirement plans. Robert's savings are in artwork uh, and antiques. I have supporting this in with my, my savings. Clearly, this is a beautiful place. But putting your entire life savings into a sinking ship is insane. And with Robert at the helm treating his staff so poorly, I don't see things getting any better. Robert is in a fantasy world. 
and I've been struggling all day to get through to him. This place, it's dreamland, a playground for your boyfriend, Robert. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just had a difficult conversation with Robert's partner, Ari, who seems strangely unconcerned about how bad things really are here. How much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars. And how much have you seen back? Nothing. But I've tried to make him see who's to blame for the problems. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. Dinner time is approaching. Word has spread about me being at the inn, and the place is bustling. Good to see you. Hello Hi. there. Hey. <laughs> nice to see yeah. you. I'm learning a lot about why the inn is struggling by watching Robert and Ari deal with the new influx of guests. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests but as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a Hello. private house. Hello there, how are you? Robert and Ari see everyone at once. There, in the corner. Make pretend you're back in 1902. It's a, meant to be a relaxed evening. And... Order in. And that's a recipe for disaster for Chef Julian and the wait staff. Chef, I'm making a change on 21. Write it down, don't tell me, just write it down. There's an order. Are you guys kidding me with all these orders? Who said everybody at once like this? Your best we don't know about pacing? How's the bread? All right. Who's writing the tickets? Jimmy, you know, in table four, table five? Some of them have names on them, some of them do not. Who wrote that ticket? There's not even a table number on there. Table four. They just got their lobster. Where's table 23? They've got. I need one person at a time. Table I need less 20. talking in the kitchen, please. Table 23 has got Every time no I food. I'm to put something up the window. Eight people ask me for something. With Julian having been slammed by the owner's dreadful seating, Ari isn't helping the strained atmosphere with an awkward art lesson. But then, like, this, this is from 1800, and it was painted for an uh, opera house, because you know what it is. Come on. Everybody has to know what that is. It's a Hannibal going across oh, yeah. the Alps with the white elephants. Oh. Everybody should know that. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the house, Robert's also busy giving a lecture. This is one of the original signs to the house. There's a lot of history here. Um, Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Evart. Did you always get this back up? I mean. Yes. Yeah? When I have poor seating, Robert has groups of his friends come in, sitting them at once. OK, so you're waiting for your starters then? Yes. OK, yep. well, let me uh, check on those for you. OK, see how thank it's you. OK, yeah. Robert. Yes. This ticket system is bollocks, you know that? Handwritten tickets, no time on there, no proper dates, no coordination. Who trains the front of house team? Who's in charge of the restaurant? Who, who is that? Uh, I would be the host, and then... You'd be the host? Yes, the chef takes over the kitchen. This place is such a mess. Clearly, Robert has no idea how to run a hotel. Yeah, I've got a Me too. Yeah, go I'm on, trying to matter? straighten out the damn drinks, because they lose. That we lost 30-something drinks. Oh, my God. Robert, we lost 30 drinks. At least. I often find drinks not written down or... Just a, a lack of follow through. And it's a big problem when we're trying to make money. There's no communication between the bar and the dining room. So people get served drinks, but no one remembers to charge for them. But we're losing big money. No kidding, and they're losing their checks, and I'm going crazy trying to figure out a system. They have hardly any guests and don't charge the ones they do have. No wonder this place is in the red. How does that happen? But they're supposed to write the drinks down and then apply them to a table and a room, and then they go into the computer. The ticket system is bogus. And as I feared, seating everyone at once is already causing problems for the staff and the guests. Yeah. It's not very warm. Yeah. It's burnt. With guests now suffering and the kitchen falling apart from Robert's ill-managed seating, yeah. come on, I have to step in. Um, just, uh, just stop there. You have to be fucking kidding me. This goose liver is burnt to a cinder. Stop. Julian. Yes, sir. Come around, buddy. I know we're in the shit and we're busy. Food's dying in the window. A foie gras salad. I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of fucking beef jerky. Where's Ari? Get me Ari, urgently. I mean, honestly, come on, guys. Hello. I stopped that. I've just said what no. That? What is that? What is that? Foie gras. Well, that's foie gras. Mm. That is not foie gras. It's, it's not funny, guys. No, that is not funny. I mean, I know we're in the ship, but does anyone have any standards here? Yes. Well, can I see them? Yes. Can I see something to hold on to? Because right now, I just want to get out of here. 
I can only be as good as I am with the tools that I have. I'm embarrassed, and I know that I can do better. I know the staff can do better. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, OK? All right. And Robert, is it possible for the first time, put the phone away, get your jacket off, and fucking dig deep a little bit, yeah? Please? Okay, yeah? To, Somebody? I'm concerned that food is in the window and it's just dying. Entrees on table six are in the window. Entrees, send them. They shouldn't be sat here. I'm, I... How am I supposed to do everything back are you, here? Are, are you with me? I'm with are you. Are you an owner? I'm with you. Are you an entrepreneur? I keep trying to, you know. You can fly talk as a to chicken. him. He's your fucking chef. Well, when I try to communicate, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I can't do it. No, he doesn't. I'll fucking do find it. your balls and tell him you need to talk to him. I found my balls. Do I want him to walk out? Well, he's not going to walk out if you communicate with him. Talk to him then. Well, I have been trying to. So when he finishes it. Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, not it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? I have been asking. I said, where does this chicken go? So ask him again! It's the middle of dinner service at Juniper Hill Inn, and Chef Julian is drowning under a flood of orders. How am I supposed to do everything back here? Owner Roberts has finally decided to get his hands dirty to try and help, but he's utterly incapable of communicating with his chef. When he finishes it, Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Where is the soup go, Julian? Table 23. Okay. I just told you one minute ago. I need foie gras. Where I know. I have it right behind me. I'll All right. Well, you see how? Okay. Julian. Yes. That's what you call communication. It's better communication. That's yes. what you call communication, Robert. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. You've got to start stepping up and fucking dictating a little bit, because this is just madness. I agree. Jesus Christ. It was fuck-ups from start to finish, and it was a clusterfuck, and Gordon saw that. Dreadful. With an owner and chef so incapable of communicating with each other, it's no surprise the diners are unhappy, and they're not the only ones. While Robert and Ari are living the dream, their staff are living a nightmare. Hopefully, by gathering everyone in one room, okay. I can get to the root of the problem. I've never seen a hotel and inn in such disarray. There needs to be structure, and there isn't structure. It's just like a scramble. It's a mess. There was no order in the kitchen. Nobody took responsibility for any one thing. No one has been taught any standards in any department. Really, it's like I'm, I'm racing from thing to thing. Nobody knows what the other one's doing. There's nobody here that is in control, willing to take charge. I did 40 fucking dinners by myself tonight. I could help you, and you've never me. asked. Oh, yeah. I can cook the rack of lamb. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. I mean, honestly, do you think that's normal, Ari? Do you think that's the way to look after your team? Every pay period, there is a problem with the checks. Every pay period, there's and a problem it, with the checks. And a lot of I don't know what the problem is, but I know it's the same two people And you get it. to know about it first, or do you have to go ask him for your salary? I always ask for it. That's absolutely wrong. And the reason is... He's lying. No, 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 he's not lying. I would rather have them wait than write a check that's going to bounce. What? Because I don't... How about telling him it's not going to be ready? Rather than having to ask, like some skivvy. Cap in hand, please, sir. May I get paid? Anybody else have to wait? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Five days more. I have to Barbara? I, I, I had to wait five weeks. You had to what? I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. Five weeks? Mm -hmm. Guys, you yeah. come in and you work your ass off. The least these two guys can do is pay your fucking salary on time. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. I'm trying to communicate with brides. I'm trying to send out things. I have to have peaceful time in order to do my work. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Well, when are you going to stand up and start showing some respect for your team and start growing a pair to sort of understand the mess you're in? I understand the mess we're in. Right. I'm fighting for the team. You dug the fucking hole. Yes, we And did. put them in it. So they're fucked. They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I mean, God. you know, the bottom line is... Oh, how dare you? No, they, they don't have to work here. Check. How dare you? How fucking dare you? They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I... 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 You can't, can't. disrespectful, disgusting man. They don't have to work here. I don't think you realise 
how fucking lucky you are. Because if it wasn't for one, two, three, four, five, six of them, you'd be driving that RV miles away from here. Robert definitely needs a reality check. It's life or death right now. And I don't think he actually realizes what kind of jeopardy this place is in. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. You're not the lord of the manor, and you're not the great Gatsby. You're, 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 you're Robert. It's only me in here that Excuse thinks... me, excuse me. Go Bye. on, then, you pompous fuck. Excuse Just... me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? I want to know what's Don't wrong with it. Don't speak to me like that. Well, I'm that. telling you, you get your head me. out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. Start paying a little bit more attention to the guys on the ground. Understand how hard it is out there. Forget your fucking antique roadshow and start from the bottom running this business. You're right, there's no structure. It's fragmented. The team needs a leader. They need a structure. They need a mentor. They need some support. And all they get is nitpicks. What kind of motivation is that? All I've heard since I've been here is that you're just blaming people. Well, I'm blaming you for not taking charge. Get fucking real. Next time, my hotel hell continues. Robert's mismanagement spreads like a virus, this time taking down the kitchen. What's the matter with you? Now, do you want to give me your jacket and I'll do it for you? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. And there's a revelation so shocking. That is disgusting. I have to do something I've never done before. I think my time's done here. Gordon left. I cannot stand any more of these bloody lies. I just don't seem like I can do it anymore. <laughs> No, I can't do it.